Alright lads, so in today's video I'm going to be showing basically all of the driving tech there is for you to know if you want to be driving as fast as possible when you're playing online. And of course I'll be starting off with some of the more simple stuff and then later on in the video we'll get to some of the more advanced strats that you can do. So without further ado, let's not waste any more time, let's just get straight into it. Okay, firstly which I won't spend too much time on is how to do a startup boost perfectly. It's very easy to get the hang of, you just need to hold your A button as soon as the 2 lands on your screen. And you should be getting this one consistently very easily. Okay, now I'm gonna get on to soft drifting, which is instead of turning with your typical left and right when you're in a drift, you hold your left stick diagonally. Now let's go back to the loop, and let's compare a clip of me soft drifting around this turn and a clip of me not soft drifting around this turn. As you can see, the mini turbos did come out at the same time, but in the clip of me soft drifting, I didn't have to turn near as tight as the clip where I was just holding hard left. Now I'm going to show the exact same thing, but on a 90 degree turn. Now look how much of an easier time I had soft drifting around this turn because I didn't have to turn as tight to get my super mini turbo out. And even if I held wide to get that super mini turbo out in time, it probably would have been just as slow. So to put it simply, if you soft drift in this game, you'll get your MTs out a lot easier. Oftentimes when I'm playing, I get asked, why are you hopping so much? Bro thinks fire hopping is still in the game, which I get your confusion and I'm here to explain to you what counter hopping is because that is what I'm doing. Now, counter hopping is when you hop in a certain direction to make it easier for your vehicle to get out an extra mini turbo. For example, on the pavement of Daisy Circuit, after getting the super mini turbo, I do two right counter hops to get out an extra mini turbo, and then after that I do another two right counter hops to get out another mini turbo, which is a lot faster than driving straight in this game. There are more examples I can give, like on Coconut Mall, if I do three counter hops to the left, I'll give myself enough room to get out a mini turbo and do a launch trick. The same can also be done on the Wario Stadium ramp if you do two counter hops to the right. So yeah, if you've ever wondered why I'm hopping around so much when I play, then hopefully that explains it. Also, a lot of the tech I've showed you so far revolves a lot around mini turbos, which you'll see is quite a common theme in this video. Uh, mini turbos are quite important in this game, if you didn't already know. Okay, now I'm going to talk about mini turbo tricks slash launch tricks. So a mini turbo trick is pretty standard. It's when you release a mini turbo and trick off of a ramp at the exact same time. But on certain bigger ramps where you can trick in certain directions, you know, front flips, back flips, etc. You can do launch tricks, which is much faster than regularly just mini turbo tricking. And I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so coming up to the ramp after charging up your mini turbo a little bit, you want to hold out wide, which in this case that would be holding to the left. And as soon as you're about to mini turbo trick off of the ramp, hold tight, which in this case would be towards the right. And in this case on Rosalina's Ice World, I was just able to make the gap because I did a launch trick. And the finished product should look a little something like this. And here's a demonstration of me doing a launch trick towards the left on Ribbon Road. So pretty much, if you are mini turbo tricking off of a big ramp, then ideally you want to be tricking in the direction that your vehicle is drifting. I'll also show off how to do launch ramps, because the execution is very very similar to launch tricks, but as far as I'm aware this is only really used on Wario Stadium. So when you drift off the ramp, you want to hold out wide and then immediately hold back in tight, and in doing so you'll get a big boost of speed while you're airborne. And even if this is one that you do struggle with, please do not trick off of these ramps, it is so much slower. Okay, now we're going to talk about super bounces, which is where you release a mini turbo right before tricking off of a bounce pad. The execution is very, very simple. You drift off of the ramp right before the bounce pad, and right as you're about to trick off of the bounce pad, you release your mini turbo and then trick. And here's a demonstration of how much time you lose if you just trick off of it normally. Yeah, that's kind of rough to be honest, you can imagine how much time you'd lose over three whole laps. But yeah, super bounces are most commonly done on tracks like DKJ. 
It definitely sees the most amount of use on a track like Mushroom Gorge, though. So yeah, if a track has a bounce pad, most of the time you're gonna want to be super bouncing off of it. Okay, now it's time to talk about gliders, because there's actually a lot we can do on them. As you saw, just like regular ramps, you can mini turbo trick off of glider ramps as well. Alternatively, you can drift off of the glider ramp and let your mini turbo release on its own, which saves just as much time as far as I'm aware. So basically doing either of these will save you a significant amount of time, rather than just tricking off of the glider ramp regularly. There is one more thing we can do on the glider ramp, and that is low glider, which clearly doesn't work very well on this track. How to do low glider is, as soon as you go off of the glider ramp, release your mini turbo and then tap the drift button again. Now of course on a track like this, it isn't very good to do low glider, but on tracks where you're releasing purple or orange mini turbos onto the glider, or tracks where the glider goes down very very steep, doing low glider oftentimes is faster. For example, on Water Park, you do a UMT Low Glider. And you also do Low Glider on Piranha Plant Cove, just because of how steep the glider goes down. So yeah, when it comes to glider ramps, you never want to be tricking off of them normally, and glider strats are a lot easier than you think. There is one more thing to talk about on the topic of gliders, and that is how to actually glide properly. It's called glider vectoring, and very similarly to soft drifting, all it is is holding diagonally and not holding hard left and right. If you do just hold exclusively left and right on the glider, it looks like this, and it is very, very slow. Oh, there's almost one thing that I forgot to talk about, and that is fast cannon. Simply put, if you hop right before getting into the cannon glider, you can get in it a tiny bit earlier and it is faster, so happy days. Okay, I want to quickly talk about how the underwater physics work in this game. Basically, the one thing you need to watch out for is if you release a trick boost or any boost of that matter while airborne underwater, effectively that boost will not do anything. You can combat this by doing either front flips or back flips as those trick animations last the longest. Or alternatively, you can just drift off of the ramps and then release your mini turbo when you land. Just wanted to quickly clear that up anyway because underwater physics in this game are so weird, man. Okay, now we're gonna get on to low half pipes. I don't actually know what the name is for this strat, but it's basically what lets you get a better landing after going off of a half pipe. Doing it is very, very easy. As soon as you go airborne off of the half pipe, you want to point your left stick in the direction that the half pipe is. So in this case, that would be towards the left. And at the same time, you also want to tap on the drift button. And if you've done that correctly, you should be getting a very favorable landing. And here's a demonstration of what it looks like if you don't do this. Yeah, that landing is really, really rough. And here's a demonstration of me doing it, but on the right this time. So yeah, if you are ever taking a half pipe, ideally you want to be doing this. Because the landing you'll be getting afterwards will be a lot more forgiving. Okay, on to the last bit of driving tech on this video, and that is Kuzan sliding. Simply put, while you're in a trick boost, you go faster if you're in a drift, rather than driving straight. So on tracks where you get a trick boost right before the end of the race, it's usually faster to do a Kuzan slide onto the finish line, rather than just driving straight. This is done on tracks like Hyrule, of course. Excite Bike Arena and also Grumble Volcano, basically any track with a ramp at the end of it. Also, if you Kuzan slide off of a ramp after your trick boost ends, you get a big boost of momentum, as shown here. And this is especially prevalent on the cog section of TikTok Clock. So yeah, getting ramp momentum from Kuzan sliding can be a little bit challenging to get used to, but Kuzan sliding onto the finish line from a trick boost is always going to be worth it on lap 3. That just about does it for all the driving tech there is in this game. Well, at least I hope so. If I did miss something, then I doubt it's too important. 
But if you do feel there was something that I missed that I should have talked about, then do leave that down in the comments. And of course, if this video was helpful to you, subscribe, like, do all that bollocks, and I will see you in the next one. In a bit, lads.